Real Life Street Stars. We're here with Jaguar Wright, what it is. Legend in the building. You really need no introduction, but for those who are deaf, dumb, and stupid, or just mad young, because we got a lot of are just young mad guys. young. Well, then I'm glad they don't know me. <laughs> Want to know why? Tell us why. Because it's nice to be new 20 years later. Hey, Amen. It's nice to be you new 25 years later. People always, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know who you are. Please. That means I still got work to do. That means I still got, I got room to run. See, when everybody knows who you are, now you got something to live up to. And if you don't live up to that, then you're old news. I'm always new news. Always. I, go, I went on my feed today and I, I, 20 people, I feel so bad. I never knew. I, oh, my God, I can't. I've been hearing that every year for 25 years. See, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. <laughs> it's not a sprint. Not at all. Hey, man, tell us how you got your start. <laughs> right. You, we, don't have, we don't have that kind of time. This is, give a, is there a summarized version? <laughs> I'll do my best to abridge it. Um, okay. I was born gifted into a family of gifted people that had no appreciation for the entertainment industry because my grandfather was a song and dance man and missed his big shot at the Cotton Club and never let anybody in the family forget it. So... I had the gift. Um, I sang before I spoke. The first sentence that came out of my mouth was a song. I didn't talk until I was four. I didn't trust people. At four, you didn't trust people? No. <laughs> Damn. You should see my baby pictures. <laughs> you should see my baby pictures. Damn. There is not a picture where I'm not like this. Am I lying? <laughs> Todd, will you tell him about the picture? With me and my family pitching, I'm sitting there looking at the camera like, what you looking at? I've been that way my whole life. I, can't, I, I was born like this. So, um, yeah, I started playing piano at five. I became a concert piano by the age of 10. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a long, sordid story. I sang in the church. I started uh, doing jazz quartets when I was 12 because I was the only person that was free during the summers. And I knew how to sing everything, Billie Holiday, Nina Simone, you know, the whole nine yards. So that's what I did for a summer job in music anyway. Um, and then uh, I decided I wanted to be a writer and I, I, I decided I wanted to be an MC. That was my life. Did you get in the game as a writer first or, or as artist? I got into the game as an MC first. Gotcha. What was your first song? I'm just curious. My first song? Your first, like the first my song. My first song released on the your radio? Your first song released on the radio. Can you feel me by the Fat Cat Click? Mm, Co-produced by J click. Yep, Co from Philadelphia. <laughs> Yellow Wallet. From Philadelphia. The fat cat click. Who's and of course they thought they were being clever because they hired Jaguar to write the hook. And um it was uh, co-produced by James Poyser, who is now on the Tonight Show, on the Fallon Show. That's crazy. So yeah. so you got That was on, the first record. So you got on as a, a solo MC first. Yes. Out of Philadelphia. Yes. Right? Um from there, what happened? Like, I mean, did, did that propel you to a different level to get noticed from different people? There's so or? many. You see, like I said, it's a hard story to tell because right. there's so many facets to it. Um, I, started, I started interning at Philadelphia International Records, The Sound of Philadelphia, for, you know, my, my, my godfather in music, my uncle, Kenny Gamble, and Leon Huff when I was 11 years old. So I was actually in the studio. I, I got to see Phyllis Hyman sing Meet Me on the Moon. I got to see her record that record. I was empty in trash cans. I thought Uncle Kenny was being cruel because he put me on the trash detail. What I figured out later was it put me in every room. So I got to see every session. I, I grew up with Gerald Levert. I, he was my first mentor as a writer. Um, I started writing for him, me and Scott Storch, when we were kids. And, um, you know, Gerald was a friend. You know, he, he was my everything on so many different levels. Huh? Yeah, I know. Rest in peace, Gerald Levert. Uh, Love and Consequences. My mama used to jam that every day while she was cooking. And that, I saw that album, mate. Album. Hey, that's big for me right there. I no saw lie. that album, mate. That album, a classic. Uh, Gerald, I'll never forget one day, he came into the studio when we were writing at Sigma. And this was when me and Scott were dating. And um, briefly, Scott Storch. And, um, <laughs> oh, the Scott like, he <laughs> brown sugar. 
<laughs> this guy like the black women, huh? That's all he likes. Unfortunately, he likes used vagina rather than pristine vagina, so me and him didn't last long. Well, when you start dating porn stars, when you start dating porn stars, I was like, nigga, you like everything brand new except for pussy. But can what you, are you can doing? Can you blame the white man for wanting some black porn star vagina? You don't bring Heather Hunter home and try to, and try to wife her up. Yes, you do. Why? <laughs> Heather Hunter? She brought her work home Prime with her. Heather Hunter? She brought her work home with her. <laughs> Not feed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to come home. Oh, honey, we're almost finished recording this scene. You don't want to see your girl like that. <laughs> Have you seen this generation of women we do it right now? See, Only fans you everywhere. know what? You just proved it. I'm getting old. I'm getting old. And you want to know why I can say that? Because I remember a time when being a drug addict was a bad thing. Thanks. I remember a time where being a caught up hoe ass chick was not the thing you wanted to be. See, I don't know what happened in music. Um, we went from high vibration to low vibration. And somewhere along the way, being a drug addict with no fucking vocabulary ran through at 25, ready to die, played out like a fucking jerry curl. It's cool. I don't know that. I don't, I don't, we don't, I'm my generation, and we were generation X. I don't understand me, that. Me and, I don't no, understand no, these me, girls. Uh, I, I was having this conversation with somebody, and I had a theory. I felt like, as a people, we've gotten to, well, the younger generation, well, all of us, not all of us, but young and middle, We've gotten to a point to where we're just so sad that any type of stimulant. Will... Oh, you're not sad. Oh, okay. Sadness is an emotion. Fact. You feel no emotions. You are all numb to life. You have been trained to be numb to life. You have been desensitized beyond your comprehension. So you can't use words like emotions when you don't have them. You're not sad. It is sad, though, that you have the loudest voice in the world and you'd rather be mumble rappers than show people how brilliant you are. You'd, ra you'd rather be dumb for money than be brilliant for legacy. It's sad. Bad. I mean, I can go back and remember <clears throat> some of my first rhymes from when I was... I remember when we went through the whole don't curse era. Right. You know, Don't Curse era was early 90s. Nobody was cursing and rhyme. We wanted to show how smart we were. We were. I carried a thesaurus and um, a dictionary in my backpack with me right. every day. I've read the dictionary 15 times. I've read each, thes each thesaurus from Webster's on to the, to the no-name brands about 25 times because I wanted my vernacular to be so tight, see. But y'all school system was probably a little bit better than the South. When I first, and see, and this was back when I was on my organized confusion, like organized confusion, they were the revolution when hip hop was changing, you know. And um, I had a song that I wrote called Soul Snatcher. I did it for. Um, <laughs> hold on, wait, wait, wait. I did it for the, you, ain't just gonna, you ain't just gonna casually say Soul Snatcher. Are we, what, what kind of Soul Snatcher are we talking Okay, so basically, <laughs> um, let me see if I can remember it, because uh, I wrote this 24. Five, six, seven years ago, uh, to snatch and not to snatch. That is the question as I come for your soul with aptitude. My attitude is very shaken. Like an abandoned child by their mother, father, sister, or brothers with your mothers, I'm killing you, killing you softly with poisonous venom so vile. And exhale, I strangulate whole nations. Termination be my specialty. Come and play with me if you choose. I deal on dangerous levels like a high risk abortion, extortion, my middle name. You play the game and I shall shame your name and claim you in the name of my master. Demonic possession, the only chapter I spill. The rapture will catch you up. Abruption, destruction, and Annihilation, desolation, catastrophe. Fees I charge for my diabolical ideas. Careers I have destroyed. Employees I have exploited. Ed over your head, it is gone once again. See, my friends are few and my enemies are more than few. Miss Cone's true if you want to, and Jaguar is coming for you with the wrath and the rage of all law. God is my witness. I'm going to end this meaning you. And I'm trying to remember the rest. Oh, I'm trying to So. Well, I did. I just said I had a I, I had a whole hip hop crush on Pharrell Munch. <laughs> um, and then you know, there are things that you know I, I started bending, um, bending my 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 flow into songs. See, so I never stopped rhyming. Um, 
it was funny because I was talking earlier about it, how at one point in time in the city, everybody was like, yo, Jaguar the MC, she hot, she hot. Oh, no, I know Jaguar the singer. It got to the point where people were arguing about who the real, I don't know about no fucking fake singing, bitch. Jaguar is an MC. And then when they would meet me at the, the trade shows or at the, they were like, well, are you Jaguar the singer or are you Jaguar the MC? I was like, I am. I am. You, what do you mean you are? I am all of those things. That's all you? And then, you know, the gimmick with singing and rapping females became hot. Missy and then Lauren. And Honestly, I sat down with my Uncle Kenny and I was like, I can't do both because everybody's doing both. It's a gimmick. It's not going to make me special. What, what, what do I need to do? He said, pick a lane and drive steady. That's what Kenny Gamble said to me. Pick a lane and drive steady. So I, I chose singing. Think that was, hindsight being 2020, do you think that was good advice or of bad advice? Of course it was. Hmm. Who wants to be a female rapper with the shelf life? Hmm. A, female, a female rapper's shelf life at maximum is 12 years. By then you either have to have an acting career or a product. Otherwise you're done. Who's booking Rod Digger? Yeah, yeah. What a, like yeah. I said, <laughs> you have a shelf life, and then by that time, you have to have something else. Luther Andros died a vocalist. Whitney Houston died a vocalist. How many female MCs you know died a female MC? What? See, they, they get you to put your ass in your titties, you know all out, all over the place, see? It didn't used to be that way. See, being the sexy, cute tomboy used to be the way. And then Biggie Smalls came in with Jessica Rabbit, Lil' Kim. What I find interesting is that for the past 25 years, everybody's been trying to be Lil' Kim, and all Lil' Kim was a figment of Biggie's imagination. He figured, all men probably get off on the same shit that I do. We can make a lot of money. And now, everybody wants to be this archetype. It wasn't until Little Kim that sex played a factor in whether or not a woman got signed. Yeah, so does crack. <laughs> Nigga, that's the realest fuck. So does crack. Crack sells, still sells. Heroin is big and crack is still selling. You want to aim high or you want to aim low? So how do we repair our culture? How do we repair this? Well, number one, you have to, you would have to strip yourselves of everything that you think you know. You, you would have to be willing to say, everything that I have in here is total and complete bullshit, and I need to start all over like I'm two years old and relearn life again. That takes dedication. Because see, most of you are comfortable in the lives that you live. You like your party, you like your car, you like your girlfriend, you like this, you like that. What if I told you that in order to become a billionaire, you would have to be homeless first? Believe that. Would you do it? See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? <laughs> Am I guaranteed to become a billionaire? Just ask. Me. What guarantees do you have in life other than your hard work and sweat? What other guarantee do you have? None. Yeah. So at the end of the day, see, do you see how you went with that? Before you actually said whether or not you could commit to it, you had to, you, you had to have a, um, um, a, back, a backup plan. Okay? There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee you're going home today. Everybody wants guarantee. Everybody wants an instant gratification. It's going to happen for me. It's going to be this way. Yet the best things that happen in life are surprises. Want to know Why? Because you didn't know them. You want to know why you didn't know them? Because if you had known them, you'd have fucked it up. That's why God don't let us see certain things. Because he knows as human beings, we are designed to hate ourselves. When you go down and you, 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 you start fucking with somebody else and boom, 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 everything that you're picking out about them is everything that you hate about yourself. You can only talk about what you know about. If you know about that man's demise, it's because you live in the same one. You're just hoping that people look at him and don't look at you. 
See, I call that the dirty cheat, the dirty t-shirt test. Now, you take somebody with a fresh white tee and put them here. And you take somebody who has some mustard stains and they wash it, but they didn't use no bleach and they in the middle, it's clean, but you know, yeah. And then you take the motherfucker with the dingy ass shit with the stains all over it. Now I want to ask you a question. Who do you think the person with the, with the not so dirty but dingy t-shirt wants to stand next to? person with the fresh white tee. Why? Because he going to... The fresh white tee look white. His shit don't look so white. Yeah, because next to that dirty nigga, he doing great. I feel like you're so wise. Like, I feel, like you can only get this type of wisdom going through some shit. Yeah, like, I've been through some shit. Yeah, so let's let's get it, <laughs> let's let, let's get into it, man. Let's get let's get into it. All right. You 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 you've been in the headlines. You've been yeah. in the blogs. You've been in the blogs. Um, my conversation on it's gonna be minimal. Facts. Okay. Um, and the reason why it's gonna be minimal is because I do have other interviews to do, and what I don't want to do right. is give too many details. Facts. For the interviews that they need to pay me for away, so that they don't have to talk to me at all. That's a fact. That's See, a fact. That's a fact. If I give you the greatest interview right now. They don't have to pay me at all. They can just pick through yours and come up with their own story. That's a fact. So let's touch on what, what can we touch on? I mean, you could touch on whatever you want to touch on, and I'll tell you <clears> what <throat> I can answer and what I can't. Okay. So but I promise you, right. I, you will get detail. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So um, let's start off like this. So from you being an MC to you getting into the Roots, how was that transition? How did you get into... I didn't want to be a part of the Roots. So how did you... Why did you become a part I of I fell in love with Richard Nichols' mind. Mm. I wasn't allowed to go to art school. I had to turn down my scholarship to Juilliard. I was supposed to go to Syracuse, and then from there I was supposed to go to law school, Harvard, and become a corporate litigator. That's what my father wanted for me. I decided to become a drug dealer and a pimp, and I got thrown out of school in about eight months. I had to, you know, I did shit. <laughs> That's, that's, I was from North Philly and it was easy money. Right. So would you say that you were just a, a product of your environment, like the, the surroundings led you to I'm, do that? I'm, or? I'm a product of everything. Yeah. I, I grew up amongst wealthy people and poor people all the time. I left the suburbs to move back to the projects. Interesting. When my friends would come home with me in the summer and they would see the big house and the big yard or when we would go down to Atlantic City to my aunt's store or when we would go to the horse ranch in Hamilton owned by my family, my friends would say, y'all got all this and you want to be in the projects? I'm like, yeah. Why? Because they sell hugs at the corner store. Mm. I love hugs. They sell oatmeal pies. <clears throat> I can't get that in the suburbs. They play double dutch until the lights come on and then it turns 3D and then we keep jumping. I can't do that. Yeah, it's I different. Can't, it's, I can't do that different. on Centurion Drive. It's a little fun in the hood. It really is. Yeah, you're right. That's a fact. I was who I was. I grew up in the projects. My family got it together. They moved to the suburbs. I went back to the projects. Then I had to go to boarding school. And when I went to boarding school, on the weekends, when classes were over, I was on the first thing smoking in Brooklyn. See, I am the street. Right. I've been the street. I've dealt with everything from true gangsters to corporate billionaires. My friends are trash men. They're congressmen. I'm just the street. Right. Just like Malik was, he was the street. Right. Just like Bahamadia is, she the street. Some niggas live in the streets. Some niggas just are the streets. There's a difference. So, so hip-hop, The Roots, all of that. At the time The Roots were approaching me, we had just started Black Lily. I figured it would be a good shot to build up my name in Manhattan. I didn't expect it to get as big as it did. It got huge. Right. <clears throat> Lines wrapped around the corner week for week for week. Right. You could walk through anywhere in lower Manhattan and people say, who you going to see on, you going to see Jaguar. Yeah, and you said you built that up from being the person that was first and everybody ended up wanting to see you to the point where you had the headline. I had to go on last. <laughs> right, you had headline. Man the headline. The, the Roots management didn't make me the headliner. Right. The owner of the club did. Right. Because the bar was losing money because every time I got off stage, the club emptied out. Right. They had to put me on last. It was a smart business decision. 
So, so from that, right, I know mm-hmm. Meg Thee Stein, she had a quote that said, black women are so unprotected, right? And just hearing your story, it sounds like the same case, like nobody- It's not just looked, black women either. It's well, that's women. true. That, that's, that's a fact. But, you know, me being a black person, I'm just going to target, you know, we're going to focus on- I got it, but you know what, though? I'm going to tell you something <clears throat> right now. When a woman gets raped, it doesn't matter what fucking color she is. Oh, okay. So, okay. That's, hurt pussy is hurt pussy. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Ain't got shit to do with color. That's a fact. That's a fact. Because they'll rape a black one, they'll rape a white one, they'll rape an Asian one. And then guess what? Some of these women have children from their rapes. And now you got a mixed kid who's confused, product of a rape with a mother that doesn't really know how to love him. Like, it, it, I am not saying that we don't have to be cognizant as African Americans. I'm saying the biggest problem with this fucking country is that that shit actually matters. Right. I'll never forget when I first got sent to London. I was getting in too much trouble in them streets, see? And I had to go to London. And I'm sitting there looking at interracial couples. Man, black as tall, woman, white as, white as snow. And I was the only fool staring because I was the only American present. Mm. This is the only country where your color matters, which is why I'll be retiring in France. I will not get old in America. America doesn't like old people. That's crazy. <laughs> so that that whole experience, like, like you said, that's 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 some deep thing, you know, right? That's deep. You know I'm what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you something right now. It's common. It is that's common. Crazy. That's crazy. Do, is it? So how are these how are these people able to keep going on with the career? What do you mean doing these heinous crimes? What do you, what do you mean? Like I'm just saying. You ain't like, never had a boy that you know did a whole bunch of dirt and you let him make it. You telling me that never happened? You never had somebody in your life who you know was dirty, who you know did dirt, and you let them make it. I, hear, I see what you're saying, but... Think about that on a corporate level. Right. On a corporate level. That's wild. R. Kelly was the first corporately sponsored pedophile in the United States. Everybody knew. That's why I couldn't really watch that documentary because half of the people that was in there, I can't believe he did it. Nigga, you used to go get the bitches too. I watched you, dog. I watched y'all make these deals. Don't nobody want to talk about Aaliyah. Don't don't nobody want to talk about that. Let's talk talk about it. There's certain things about that I won't talk about. (laughs) I'll let Dame Dash talk about it. See, that's his business. Right. And when he's ready to talk about it all, I'll corroborate every word that he says. But it's not my story to tell. But it's real. It's real. How does a 14-year-old girl get married and no adult in the family knew? Unless, I'm just saying, I heard you uh, say something earlier to the effect of... um, It's fucking awful what they did to that woman. It's fucking awful. She was amazing. Aaliyah was amazing. Yeah, she really was. If she had been alive now, there's a lot of people that wouldn't have jobs. Funny how that worked out for some people. You know, one thing I learned um, about in jail, when I was in jail, fighting, clearing my name, I learned how to move niggas around, see. See, when you in county jail, you want to really survive and be cool, you got to learn how to move people around. Oh, this chick going to be a problem. She likes to fight over the ice. Hmm. What code violation can we set her up for? Oh, you got to go to PC. You learn. They do the same shit in the industry. They move niggas around. You know, it's all fun until the rabbits got the gun. Uh, I heard you say earlier that um, this shit doesn't, the music shit doesn't really bother you because you were so busy being great at other things. Yes. How is it that you are able to have gone through so much, things that were physically had put, have people in like facilities 
how do you still how are you still able to cope because it this was you know it oh, sounds I had like a nervous PTSD. breakdown yeah it sounds like PTSD almost what do you mean I've had PTSD since I was seven years old I'm from North Philly yeah that's that's facts North Philly is PTSD on steroids injected into your neck First time I saw the man killed in front of me, my uncle did it. He blew a hole through somebody. All I know is we was playing jacks on the step. I heard a man running, screaming, no, no. And he jumped over our head. He took off running. He didn't make it but 50 paces. And then I seen the hole go through. And then I, heard, I felt the smoke and, and, and the gunpowder fall on my head. I was three years old. First time I seen a man's guts all over the concrete where we played jacks and hopscotch. I know what it's like to have your cousin high on LSD, acid and everything else, and accuse you of stealing money that's sitting there right in front of you and bend you over and sodomize you for stealing what is right there in his face because he's too high to see it. And then dump you in a closet and tell you to go to sleep. That was 10. Fuck you been through. I ain't been through shit. It gets worse. <laughs> it gets worse. Imagine sitting in your living room, minding your business, watching uh, Mari Povich or something. Back then it was Richard Bay. And five men come through your front door and they stay for two days. And we didn't talk about the weather. I've been through more things than, than most of you will ever fucking be able to understand or know. I know what it's like to wonder whether or not when that door come up, are they going to let me out or are they going to blow my fucking brains out? Y'all niggas is soft. Y'all kids, you're fucking soft. You like to shoot up everybody and shoot up everything because you don't know how to fight. <clears throat> I wish a nigga would try me even right now. I wish a nigga would. I could use the practice. I'm serious. Life has been serious for me. Yeah. Let me ask you this: like any 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 female entertainer or artist trying to do music, right? Yeah. What would be your advice to them? You know Don't. what I mean? Oh. Unless you built for it. I would never wish this career on any woman. There's only three different kinds of careers in this world where a woman's safety and, 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 and respect for her body are, are totally disregarded. Strippers, sex workers, and female entertainers. We are treated no different than prostitutes because we're entertainers. Well, that's what, that's what the word actress used to mean back in the 1800s. It meant prostitute. We're the meat. Judy Garland used to say it best. They come and they love me while I'm on stage. And then I go and I take the, I take the, the clothes off and it's just me and the bag of bones. Wondering when it'll all be over. Judy Garland said that about her experiences. She was in one of the greatest American films of all time. You remember? What's the name of the movie? The Wizard of Oz? If you knew how many times they took a piece out of her. While she was going down the yellow big road, she was probably clicking them damn shoes, hoping that they worked for real. Or how many young child stars get passed around at parties? If you actually knew the stories about Michael Jackson. If you actually knew what they do to children what they did to my, 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 my very close friend, Latoya Gaines, Rosie Gaines' daughter from New Power Generation. Her and Tevin Campbell were very close. I, I know Tevin, but we're not friends. He and, him and Latoya were friends. How does a boy with a voice like that, that had the records that he had that could have easily transformed into one of the greatest male vocals of all time, end up prostituting himself for drugs and change on Hollywood Boulevard? 
How does that happen with a gift like his? My advice to any female who wants to get into this business, have a thick skin, do not drink alcohol, never get high in front of anybody, keep somebody close to you that you know at all times, summer, Has anybody bothered to ask why she all of a sudden became claustrophobic and couldn't perform anymore? Because she had anxiety? Yeah, she got anxiety. Somebody touched her. I don't know it for a fact, but I seen it in a, I heard it in, I know, I know the sound. I can look in a woman's eyes and tell when she's been touched. She don't trust none of the people that she around, so she just gonna stay off the road, you see. Now, for every name that I can tell you that you know, I can give you about 55 to 1 of all the ones that didn't make it but got the stories. See, those are the ones. Those are the worst ones. Because you got ran through. You, got, you went through all of that, and then you made it to the deal, and then, and then, and then you ain't getting no deal. But, but you got all the horror stories, though. That's why women in this game go so hard. This is my spot. It's my spot. And it's worse in hip hop than it is in singing. Guard your loins until we find a way to change the way women are treated in this industry. Guard your loins. Because it doesn't make any sense. If I go to work and I sing my heart out and I do a concert and I got to do the meet and greet and I got to do to this and I got to do to that and yada, 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 whoop de whoop de woo When I get on my bus, I'm going to be what? I'm going to be tired, right? I'm going to want to get some sleep, right? Right. right. Am I going to want to see a whole bunch of noise and hear a whole bunch of foolishness? <laughs> so me walking into a fucking gangbang and niggas saying, oh, let me move out the way with your dick in somebody's mouth. You could get in your bunk. I don't know whose juice is laying all over this shit. Who the fuck wanna deal with that? Really? Crazy. Or gotta worry about whether or not when I get in my bunk, if somebody's going to cry, climb in my bunk with me. It's the only fucking profession where women can be sexually assaulted and there's nobody to go to because whoever they would go to would rather make the money than do what's right. That's how R. Kelly became R. Kelly. Money over morals? What morals? Saying, it's the music like industry. Where are the mo wait, what morals? No, saying, it's, they're choosing money over morals. Listen to me. It's deeper than that. It's not even money. See, it's power. It's dominion. Are you spiritual? Of course I am. So, it, did, did you, like, this praying and, like, how do you, how do you get through this? Because it's a lot to carry. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of burden to carry. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, Alcoholism for a while. You know, I, I used to think I was taking a drink and the pills to numb the pain in my back because I have severe scoliosis. Right. It was to numb my head because I would walk off those buses and leave those girls there. I would walk out of those hotel suites and leave those girls there knowing what was going to happen to them. And I didn't say shit because I had to keep my mouth shut so I could keep my spot. Speaking of um, scoliosis, you, you came up um, with your own products, yes. Triple D. Yes. Uh, Triple D Cafe. Yes. Um, CBD, um, your own brand that you made. You said that it actually helped you deal with some of that pain. Oh, absolutely. Correct? Especially oh. my salve. I mean, my salve is a miracle. It's infused with sour diesel, CBD. CBD sour diesel. Okay. Here, smell it. Yeah, come spell. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you. <laughs> On camera. <laughs> Does anybody have any aches and pains? Do you have, do you have any aches and pains? Uh, like, do you have issues with your knees or with your wrists? Sometimes my back hurt, you know, okay, well, from heavy lifting. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he did right, say right, it right, right. Well, I didn't yeah, mean it like I'm that. But, so you know. my neck. 
my right, neck. Right, right, right. I didn't mean it in that form, but you know, I do have back pains from lifting heavy material and stuff like that. Are you hurting anywhere right now? Okay, now see that no that I, I that I can work that's, with. That, that's more professional. Lift your sleeve up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, right. I can't say. I can't. I can't go in like this. Yeah, shout out! Oh, shout okay. out to uh, Jaguar Wright, real life. Yeah. Shout Every out politicians. Shout out to Black. Shout out to this Black Queen with her products, man. Triple D Cafe. Y'all make sure y'all tap in. I got some of this juice. Oh, I don't man. know what what. That's the what, watermelon tea. This the watermelon tea. tea. Mm -hmm. Man, this shit is so delicious. And so what is this right here? This is what, my salve. Right. What is it called? Other than it's salve? It's called salve. Like, I mean, like, you know, CBD salve? Oh, or? no, it is CBD. Okay. This okay. is CBD. It's so called Jag salve. Jag salve. Mm -hmm. So the Jag put a salve on a dog, canine keys. Mm -hmm. Canine keys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Animals got to look out for each other. Right, right, right. All right, you can pull it down. I appreciate that. I'm about to notice them. I had a, a fight a few years ago. And just give it a couple action. minutes. Relax yeah. yourself. So, so for, for, for you, you just rub some sad, but can you explain to the audience what that does? Um, it does, you said it helps with the pain. So like, let's say I have severe back pains. Can I use this product? Actually, you know what? Can my husband tell you? Absolutely. I'm not good. Absolutely. Come, come, here, on, husband, come on, come on now. Come on. <laughs> just grab, you can just my grab My husband them. is a war veteran. There you go. You can just grab the mic. You ain't on camera. All right, all right. <laughs> so, uh, like she said, I'm a war veteran. Operation Iraqi Freedom, second wave. We did Shout a whole you, bunch salute. of movement. Yeah, you thank know. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. thank you for your support. So with issues with my knees and stuff, we'll take a hike and my knees start burning. So we'll probably do like a two mile hike, come home and can't move. Right, right. So uh, Jack made the salve. She said, let me rub this on your knee. So I don't know, baby, you know, I don't know if it's going to work. So she put it on my knee. As soon as she put it on my knee within five minutes, it stopped burning. That's now my right knee was still burning. So now she rubbed that one. Yeah. And after that, so I got up gone. and I could go play ball if I wanted Let's to. Let's go. You know what I mean? So Let's go, Brandon. Hey, it's, it's a miracle, miracle. I've tested it on white people. I've tested it on Asian people. I've tested it on African American people. Different ages. Different everything. And it's the same result. My mother has severe arthritis in her hands. Her hands will swell up to here. And you can't see the veins, you can't see the bone, nothing. I gave her a hand massage. That was, what, six days ago? She couldn't move her hand. She couldn't even get into the refrigerator because she couldn't do it. She's walking now. She did full body, body rub down. She's walking now. And her hand went back to normal. And it, has, and it hasn't swollen back up since. And, and, it, and these are your own homegrown products that Absolutely. you are creating. That is a Absolutely. blessing. Um, can you also talk about some of the um, the food that you have? Also, you have well, I mean, because you're a chef now, people yeah. need to know that you are a chef. Absolutely, let's get it. Absolutely, I mean, I do everything. Um, I specialize in 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 you know classing up comfort food. Um, I think comfort food is amazing. I think a lot of times it's just not properly imagined. So, I mean, when I was on tour, a lot of people would want to go sightseeing and stuff like that, I would go to five-star restaurants and I would volunteer. They call it staging. So I could learn from master chefs. I mm. volunteered in kitchens with Anthony Bourdain to watch that man cook. I learned how to make sushi in Okinawa from a, from, from a real fish god, they call them. There's only about four in the world. They literally get up, they go down to the, to the water, they, they catch the fish, and that becomes the catch of the day, and the sushi meal is made out of that. Nothing fresh and nothing better. It's to the point where he can look in the eyes and not have to cut it open to know exactly what the fat content is. That's how in tune he is with fish. Wow. Real, real life is coming to invade. <laughs> we coming up here. Yeah. I want some of that. Well, <laughs> what you need to do is... You just need to let us know when you're coming. We do tasting parties once a month where we do full medicated tours from CBD to THC. We create the entire ride. So this way you're coasting and you're chilling and you're having a great time. And we try, we'll try not to download you with more than 3,000 milligrams in a full meal. We'll try not to. You have, you have the, the cooking, the salves, the treatments. Um, How's you your shoulder feeling, by the way? 
Fruit testament from K9 Keezy. His shoulder is relaxed right now. So y'all go, y'all go tap in. Where can they get these products? Can they get it online anywhere, or is it just you got to pull up? Uh, I'll let my partner let's tell go, you. Let's go, let's go. You can go to Cafe Triple D on Instagram. Uh, also, Triple D Cafe at Gmail. Just drop us a link. Drop us what you like to order. We'll be putting our shipping, our shipping uh, orders out. You know our directions. Um, you know if you go wholesale with us. You know, uh, and you do, uh, you know, anything over two hundred dollars, your shipping is free. Um, but yeah, I mean, the truth is, is I want to help heal the world in every way I possibly can to make up for all of the destruction that I I brought to it. The things that I say to you, I don't say them to you to to look down on you. I say them to you because I was worse than you. Oh, I understand what you're saying. I do. I, 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 I really do know it's always a deeper way of thinking and uh, people experience things. Don't play and, it so light. And, and you, you are an intelligent yeah. black man. You are the master of your own fate. The white man has been scared of you for years because of everything that is in your blood that all you need to do is activate and you will become the captain, the man of whatever you set your mind to. For 400 years, we were held in captivity. We built this country for them, and they still expect us to pay taxes. And yet, we've managed to thrive. They didn't have to do no work. They have 400 years of free labor. And we still have become millionaires and billionaires and this and that. Imagine if we actually really took that and put it to work. Imagine what you could do. Stop playing it so light. You're heavy. Talk heavy, baby. Mm. Talk heavy. Talk heavy. Come on, perfect. You got any shout outs? Yeah. Shout out to Jill Scott and Erica Badu. Hope your streams are doing well. Hope you're streaming amazing. I told you, bitch, I hope you make all the money in the world. You can, because you're going to need it, because you'll never have friends. I mean, with the two of you have each other, so shout out to y'all in a big way. In a big way. And, um, you know, strap up. Oh, but, wait, before, Bundle up. It's a cold world. Before we get out of here, can we, can we talk about the track you previewed? The who? The track, the, the track that you just showed oh, us. Oh, sure, absolutely. Takashi 69 Takashi 69 Look at Me. Okay. Which will be featuring Bahamadia. Hey, when I tell y'all. Hey, she bringing it back, that real music, <laughs> that shit that I like. Yo, can, 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 you, can you talk about, you know, your comeback, you know, in music, to the Takashi 69 track, how that came about? It's so interesting because um, I never stopped writing. I never stopped performing. I never stopped recording. I just stopped doing it here in the United States. That's all. I've been releasing projects consistently or been a part of some kind of awesome project every year for ever i just i had to play it light because i couldn't make no real money until my son turned 18. i promised my ex-husband he'd never get another dime from me i meant it you know child support yeah that, that, that's interesting well i mean when we were getting divorced he wanted eight thousand dollars a month you know mary j blige can pay kendu i wasn't paying that fucker you can pay him bitch like you should Cause you stole from everybody else. Now you sitting there paying for all them fucking kids. You ain't even have them, dumbass. Hold Fuck on. Mary J. Blige too. Hope you're doing well. Shout out to Mary J. Blige. Hope your streams are doing amazing. Hope they give you another season on Umbrella Cal. Um, uh, what is that? Umbrella, Umbrella Ac Academy. And you actually learn how to read your fucking lines. So. Man, what's about what happened in um, the dancery? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never, I never stopped doing music. I actually have, um, I'm a music hoarder. So I have over 565 songs vaulted that just need to be mixed and mastered. I, I write at least 50 songs every year. Oh, wow. So, yeah, um, I don't know if I would call it a comeback as much as a release. Okay. 
You know what I mean? Because I just have all of this great music pent up. And then, you know, there's there's the three rock albums that I wrote. I have four jazz albums that I've written that all have not been released. I'm saving them for my play. Um, yeah. Uh, that can excellent. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, I mean, the truth is, is I'm just, I'm an urban legend in real life. I've always been there. I'm always there. I still pay people for information in the streets where I don't live. That's how much I like to know what's going on in the world. You know, I'm just, I'm G'd up. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. For anybody who want to, that wants to do any type of work with you, whether it be the product, you know, or music, how would they get in contact with you? <laughs> We're a team. We're not here. We're a team. Dalladelphia Productions, 214.5 at Gmail. D A L L A D E L P H I A Productions 214.5 at Gmail. And I know he's a shooter. Look, and, look and, at his and, eyes. And quick, yeah, and quickly. Um, Rakeem Al Jabbar is that's the homie, man. Um That's my little brother. I know, that's that's why I thought that was throat. Um super dope artist. Um can quickly touch on some of the people that you're doing music with. And um Rakeem Al Jabbar, Ruben Lau, Just Mandy. Kerryon Johnson, Lala J, formerly of the Badu team. I don't know if she's gonna be on it. I don't. I, I don't even know if any of them are gonna have jobs after I'm finished with them. UPS is hiring. Um, I ain't gonna lie, that UPS hell. It's hot as hell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, UPS. I remember one. Now I remember. Hey, hey, good to be too. I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm gonna tell you like this. I don't know what y'all got going on. I don't know what y'all got going on. My name is Paul. That's between y'all. But I know if somebody say UPS hiring, they didn't fucked up. That's all I'm like. That that shit hell. Like, I'm gonna I, tell you my issues. I'll tell you my list of grievances very quickly. I don't like women that are betrayers of women. Number one, and I don't like smart girls who like to pretend to be dumb hoes. Erica Badu has put a stranglehold on this marketplace for over 25 years successfully putting herself as the elite and everyone under her there's 25 Grammy winners and some of them multi Grammy winners in the DFW area why doesn't nobody know it there's nothing but monsters here Rakeem Al-Jabbar DQ QP even Flower Child, though I don't fuck with her. Even Flower Child. I mean, there's amazing talent here. Leon Bridges, Keith Young, Sean Martin, outside. You know what I mean? It, it, it. How can you call yourself an artist and you cheat people out of the opportunity of being artists themselves? Oh yeah, you can be an artist as long as you work for me and I can pay you pennies and I tell everybody you're only available for me and tell everybody that you're not that good and you can't do this and you can't do that. Give me this one reason. The last RC and the Grits album, did you hear it? Why not? They from Dallas. Why didn't you hear that album? It was a dope ass album. It even had a feature from Common on it. Somebody else that she was supposed to be fucking that she never gave no pussy to. But my point is, why didn't you hear the RC and the Grits album? It was phenomenal. You're from Dallas. Why haven't you heard it? I'm asking. I'm asking. It don't matter. He from Texas. I knew he was going there. That's why I told him. I ain't going to just play in Dallas like that. You, know, like, you ain't got to listen to me. Listen to me. Do you. Then claim Toby. Claim Toby because he the shit. <laughs> she on this nigga. <laughs> but my thing is, is you know who Toby is, but you, you never heard the RC and the Grits album. Now I want you to think about this. Who was the, who was the celebrity uh, um, 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 features on Toby's projects? Nobody. Now if he had had some celebrities on it, it might have took things right. Uh, right? So why did RC and the Grits have multiple celebrity features and nobody even knew that the album was out 
He is Erica Badu's musical director, been her musical director for over 10 years. Did you see her putting these posts up saying, hey, go buy RC and the, and, and the Grits new album. The shit is fire. It, it's certified, certified by do. Did you hear her say that? That's why you never heard the album. But he still works for her. She Harriet Tubman, yo. And she told people she was going to get them to the promised land. And instead, they moved to the other side of the plantation and they working for her and they still waiting to get off. How many years before they get off the fucking plantation down here? Another 20? Do we got to wait for the bitch to die for there to be another star in goddamn Dallas with all this motherfucking talent here? That's why I came here. I'm an anarchist at heart. I came here to set the whole fucking thing free. There's nothing but monsters here. Dallas is constantly underrated by Houston, by Austin, yet... Two-thirds of the talent supplied to Austin come from Dallas. Why the fuck you got to go to Austin to make it? Shit. Why? Shit. Why you got to go to, why, do you gotta, why you got to go down to Houston to make it? Mm. Why? Fuck you can't make it from here. I'm going to tell you why. Because there's motherfuckers that don't want you to. And y'all celebrate them anyway. Fucking haters. 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 Hey. When are you gonna start a podcast? I'm I'm subscribing. <laughs> the day you got to do it. Oh goddamn it! You gotta do it. Oh, it, you gotta do it. Hey, yeah. We'll come shoot it. Hey, God damn it. <laughs> we'll come shoot the motherfucker. Oh my god! Excuse me. Say what about what? Calm down. No, calm down. <laughs> oh, Houston, the business. Toby is everything. The only problem I got with Toby is that he did that idol worship with that Badu record. Uh, Erica Badu thinks I'm dope. Miss Badu told me I'm dope. I don't know if that song's gonna be so hot now. Cause her fucking opinion don't really fucking matter for shit. It's a great record. It was a catchy tune. But I always tell artists, jock yourself. Don't be running around here jocking, jocking. You don't know who these fucking people are. They're fucking animals. They're degenerates. And that uh, bitch is the biggest fraud anybody ever seen. She came up north. We treated her like shit. We ain't think not no fuck about no Erica. She wouldn't go on stage an hour before me or an hour after me hoping people would forget how dope I was so she could slide in with her mediocrity. Tariq tried to told her to her face, you're lucky Kedar Massenberg is paying us so good because I think you're whack, bitch. And Malik B is the only person that ever showed her any respect and she couldn't even post for him and she called herself an okay player. A platform that I made cool. Fuck you, hoe. Who the fuck gives a fuck what you think about what's dope? Because anything that you think is dope, you slumping. So yeah, that, yeah other than that, Houston's awesome. Toby's the shit. He, he might want to change that song and find a new hero. He might want to find yeah. a new hero because that bitch ain't the business. And Jill Scott, you shouldn't have fucked all my you shouldn't have fucked all my dudes. You shouldn't have fucked all of your girlfriend's dudes, you hoe. That's why that nigga Joe robbed you. That's why he robbed your house. That's why you got ushered out for bringing all that ghetto shit to Hollywood. Fuck out of here, fucking Joey Zaza. I'm glad he fucked your place up too, bitch. I ain't here to vet your dick. Ooh, Jack fucked him. It must be good. Fuck you. Find Man. your own tree. Man. We used to be best friends, you know? It's personal. It's personal. Jag Fuck her. Jaguar. I hope your streams are awesome. <laughs> Man. Hey, Jaguar, you, you the motherfucking business out here. <laughs> Podcast drop. <laughs> Man, hey. We love everything we're doing. You love your music, man. You got products. Your products are amazing. You have juices. Go back, hey. go back and check my feed about 2016. I did a post. I think I'm going to repost it today. I said in the post, uh, somebody asked me what I was doing in Dallas. And I said, I'm here to help. Dallas mm -hmm. is awesome. And I'm here to help. And that's mm -hmm. what I've been doing. And you are a real life street star. And unfortunately, if I gotta have to move some niggas around mm. 
to make it possible for the floodgates to come open for all of the great artists that we have here. I'll do it for them. I did it for my home back in Philly. Why wouldn't I do it? I live here. My husband from Oak Cliff. I am Dallas too. Now and always. And the same commitment that I have to Philadelphia is the same commitment that I intend to have to Dallas. And I will not leave here until my work is done. I will not leave here until Rakim Al Jabbar is a multi platinum artist consistently every time he releases. I will not leave here until Lala J wins her Grammy. I will not leave here until Ndambi gets her Grammy. I will not leave here until Madaku Chenwa is actually getting $20,000 a track, like he should be getting paid, considering how many Grammys he's won. For Miss Badu, by the way, who robbed him. The only smart man in the whole crew was Ty Macklin, because he said, nope, I ain't having it, I want my money. And they still mad at him. How you gonna be mad at somebody for going to court and getting money that somebody owe him? That ain't robbery. That, that's called pay your fare, bitch. You I'm mad at him. You got everybody mad at Ty Macklin. Don't nobody want to go to AOE because Ty is a traitor because he wanted his money? I'm sorry, when you go to work, don't you want to get paid? Who don't want to get paid for work that they do? And you can't always pay people in pussy. You're going to have to come up with some bread eventually. Yeah, that, yeah, that pussy get old. <laughs> Listen to me. Do you want to know what my uncle used to say about vagina? Who is it? The only thing better than good pussy is new pussy. No, I had, uh, I you stop had, being new pussy after the first night. I ain't going to lie. I had this little freak I used to deal with back in the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, she really put me on some game. Uh, no two people you sleep with feel the same. Like, that's. I never just thought about it like that. Like, it's, it's like that. Well, yeah. I mean, if you want to put it to the test, strap up. You know what I'm saying? Just strap up. You can put it to the yeah. test. Just mm -hmm. strap it up. Yeah, yeah. Right I had on, my man. fun. So. People ask me all kinds of questions about myself. I was a fucking rock star. Mm -hmm. I did rock star shit. And what? Well, I mean, there's no need in judging. All my girlfriends were prettier than most of the guys that I dealt with anyway. <laughs> I, I, you know, I used to tell my ex-husband all the time, you, you need to stop fucking with me because I'm the only reason you still get good pussy. You are an alpha female. Yeah. Nobody call you Jack. Yeah, Jack. Are you a Leo? I don't lie. No, I'm a Taurus. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah, two days, two days before Malcolm X, three days after Raphael Sadiq. You do the, the, the K out the window? <laughs> Nigga! Yeah. That's the Ms. Jaguar, you are a real life street star. Thank you for coming. Triple D Cafe! Triple D Cafe, it go, was go, go fuck with it right now, man. Can, can I say one thing to you guys? I like what you're doing here. We trying. No, I like what you're doing. Do more. We're going to come more. shoot your podcast. <laughs> Fuck you mean. <laughs> and, and, and on that, I'll turn it over to you. <laughs> Thank you. God bless. Good night. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Real Street Stars, nigga. Moolah. Hey.